Hi everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt. Over the last couple days, an article has been making the rounds around the tech universe uh, that basically shows Chrome and Safari RAM usage and how Chrome uses, in theory, 24 times as much RAM as Safari. This is a spectacular result and as such is being circulated around and you know, people, especially if you're a fan of Safari, are like, yes, this proves it. Look at how bad Chrome is. And while I am the Safari fan as well, the data was a little suspect from the start. And I would say the biggest tell was Safari's RAM usage really looks like as someone opened up 54 tabs, the RAM usage is a straight line, which doesn't make sense. So the issue that someone brought up that is uh, probably leading to the different results between the two browsers is that they're counting all the processes that Chrome is using for every single tab, whereas Safari, they're only measuring the main Safari process, not all of the uh, subsequent processes that it kicks off for each tab. Because we, we don't have to get into it, but basically Safari uh, is, is it ha runs each tab in its own process, and so they're a different thing. And so you need to add up all of those, not just the main Safari process. And so today I wanted to test this myself. And so I will say up front, this is not a perfectly scientific test. Uh, it's as good as I can do though. So I'm using a 2020 MacBook Air uh, that I just got a week ago. So it has very little stuff on it, very little cruft. Uh, I'm going to be logging into 10 sites uh, that I'm not logged into. So the content should be the same, like in everything, I shouldn't be logged in. It should just show me general content. Uh, and then I'm doing this all with Keyboard Maestro. I'm setting up a script that will load all 10 sites, it'll scroll them, it'll do the same actions across all 10 things, and then it'll kick open Activity Monitor so I can count how, um, how much RAM is being used by each app. And so I'm gonna share my screen. I'm going to show you a time lapse of the testing right now so you can see it. Uh, you can see the methodology, you can see the sites I go to. I may just list them all over here so you can see the 10 sites. And yeah, um, we'll see what the results are. I'm filming this before I do the test, so I literally have no idea what's gonna happen. So let's take a look. So that's it. I'm gonna throw a lot of numbers at you and I'm gonna put the key results right here on screen. Basically on app launch, Safari has a definite RAM advantage. So it's using about 250 megabytes versus Chrome's 450, which is about 45% less. So Safari absolutely uh, takes the lead at the start by using much less RAM. However, once we load 10 sites, the difference is much more negligible. So Safari still has a lead, it's about 12% less. Uh, but when we look at the raw, like the absolute difference between the two, it hasn't changed that much. So on app launch, Safari was using 200 megabytes fewer, uh, or less RAM, I should say, than Chrome. And then after 10 websites were open, it was using 287 megabytes less RAM. Uh, so 87 megabytes at some point in those 10 sites was saved on Safari. That could be margin of error stuff, that could be the sites loading slightly different content, but in general, Safari did always have less RAM usage than Chrome, um, but it wasn't a huge, huge difference. And so that makes sense, right? We're loading documents, we're not loading, like it's not magic what's happening here. Like we're loading documents that are have rich content and stuff. So like it, they're fancy documents, they're not just like loading a Word doc, but it makes sense that they're storing similar amounts of data because they're loading the same content. And so that was my testing method. Uh, I think it's pretty pretty reliable and actually makes a whole lot more sense than the outlandish numbers we saw uh, from that original test. Um, so yeah, if I did anything absolutely wrong, I'd love to know it. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to retest this, maybe do an update to this video if there are some really big mistakes that I made. I may even unlist this video and do a whole new one to like make sure I get the right stuff out there because I don't want to be spreading misinformation. I don't want to be uh, creating fanboy fodder. I wanted to get to the truth. And so hopefully I got closer to that today. Um, but yeah, uh, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you loved it, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.